I'd like to take a moment to let you all know about a new nonprofit organization started by my brother Craig. It's called Treats and Truth. They fill oversized brown lunch bags with snack items, chips, crackers, popcorn, cookies, etc. Also, a bottle of water, toothbrush, toothpaste, sanitary wipes, and most importantly, a small gospel tract book of John. No cigar? Uh, I'll have to talk to him about that. The bags are then hand-delivered to the homeless and people in need in and around the Los Angeles area. Let's help get this ministry off the ground. They're a 501c3 tax-exempt organization, so any and all donations are tax-deductible and greatly appreciated. Visit their website at treatsandtruth.org. Check out the show notes for the link. Also, please follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you. Welcome to episode 155 of the Burning Bush podcast, where we share the message of the Bible while enjoying a good cigar. Hope you're doing well, and I'm glad you've joined me. Today we're reading the New Testament book of Luke, chapter 12, with commentary from the notes in the Charles Spurgeon Study Bible, and I'm smoking the McAuliffe Herencia Habano in the Toro 6x52 Vitola. So let's go over to the McAuliffe Cigars website and see what they have to say. Herencia Maduro. Draw slow to experience the elevation of your senses one level at a time. The Herencia Maduro is the first Maduro released by McAuliffe. A smooth and rich Maduro, the cigar has a ton of unique flavor. The Nicaraguan Maduro wrapper gives robust flavors of chocolate and espresso. It is rounded off with a light pepper to give the cigar a balance of sweetness and spice. And strength is medium to full. The wrapper is Nicaraguan Maduro. Binder is Ecuadorian Sumatra. And the fillers are Nicaraguan and Honduran. And the Vitolas are 5.5 by 52 box pressed torpedo and a 6 by 52 toro. And it did receive a 93 rating from Cigars and Spirits magazine as well as a 91 rating by Cigar Journal. That is the McAuliffe Cigars Herencia Maduro. Let's get into this week's reading in the book of Luke, chapter 12. I am reading from the English Standard Version, the ESV, and verse 1. In the meantime, when so many thousands of the people had gathered together that they were trampling one another, he began to say to his disciples first, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Nothing is covered up that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark shall be heard in the light, and what you have whispered in private rooms shall be proclaimed on the housetops. And Spurgeon comments on verse 3, Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have whispered in an ear in private rooms will be proclaimed on the housetops. Check your tongue. Be cautious and careful. Live always as one who realizes God's omniscience. While one of the ancient orators was speaking on one occasion, all his hearers went away, with the exception of Plato. But he continued to speak as eloquently as ever, for he said that Plato was a sufficient audience for any man. So if there are none but the eyes of God looking on you, be just as careful as if you were in the streets surrounded by your fellow creatures." 
No, be more careful because you are in the presence of your creator. And back to Luke verse 4. I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who kill the body and after that have nothing more that they can do. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear him who, after he is killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? And not one of them is forgotten before God. Why, even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not. You are of more value than many sparrows. And Spurgeon comments on verse 7. Indeed, the hairs of your head are all counted. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. God knows the minutest details of our lives and being. It is always a great comfort to remember that our Heavenly Father knows us. A dying man who had been for many years a believer had a minister at his bedside who asked him, Don't you know Jesus? Yes, sir, he replied, I do. But the ground of my comfort is that he knows me. And back to Luke verse 8. And I tell you, everyone who acknowledges me before men, the Son of Man also will acknowledge before the angels of God. But the one who denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But the one who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. And when they bring you before the synagogues and the rulers and the authorities, do not be anxious about how you should defend yourself or what you should say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brothers to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told him a parable, saying, The land of a rich man produced plentifully, and he thought to himself, What shall I do, for I have nowhere to store my crops? And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods." And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. And he said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? If then you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. And Spurgeon comments on verse 27. Consider how the wildflowers grow. They don't labor or spin thread. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was adorned like one of these. When God does anything, he does it well. He is a grand housekeeper. He does not measure out so many ounces of bread per diem as if it were in a workhouse. The lilies might do as well without their golden hues. They might ripen their seed without the lengthened stems that lift them where they can be observed, but God takes more care of them 
than Solomon did of himself. If we trust our Heavenly Father, He will see that we have no cause for care. If we trust Him with our souls, He will not give us a bare salvation, but a rich robe of righteousness to cover all our nakedness. When He does any work, He does it after a better fashion than the wisest of men could do it. Nature herself, working as she does for the lilies, is only God working in another way. But when God himself, without the intervention of the laws of nature, works in the kingdom of his grace, he does it both perfectly and gloriously. And back to Luke verse 28. But if God so clothes the grass which is alive in the field today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried, for all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Fear not, little flock, For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning, And be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast, so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at table, and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Peter said, Lord, are you telling this parable for us or for all? And the Lord said, Who then is the faithful and wise manager whom his master will set over his household to give them their portion of food at the proper time. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if that servant says to himself, My master is delayed in coming, and begins to beat the male and female servants, and to eat and drink and get drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he does not know, and will cut him in pieces and put him with the unfaithful. And that servant who knew his master's will, but did not get ready or act according to his will, will receive a severe beating. But the one who did not know, and did what deserved a beating, will receive a light beating. Everyone to whom much was given, of him much will be required." And from him to whom they entrusted much, they will demand the more. I came to cast fire on the earth, and would that it were already kindled. I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how great is my distress until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For from now on in one house there will be five divided, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, Mother mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you say at once, A shower is coming. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, There will be a scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, 
but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? And Spurgeon says about verse 56, Hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky, but why don't you know how to interpret this present time? Our Savior's character and miracles attested his Messiahship, for he worked among the people such works as no other man had ever done, and taught them with a divine authority they could not resist. Did not the blind see? Did not the deaf hear? Did not the lame walk? Were not lepers cleansed and the dead raised? And was not the gospel preached to the poor? What other tokens could they ask? Were not these the emblems their great prophet Isaiah had left on record for their guidance? As certainly as a cloud in the western sky predicted rain, and a wind from the south was the sign of heat, so assuredly there were infallible tokens, visible to all who chose to see them, that the Messiah had come. And back to Luke, verse 57. And why do you not judge for yourselves what is right? As you go with your accuser before the magistrate, Make an effort to settle with him on the way, lest he drag you to the judge, and the judge hand you over to the officer, and the officer put you in prison. I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the very last penny. And that's the end of today's reading in the book of Luke. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to the Charles Spurgeon Study Bible, as well as today's cigar. Also, Groundworks Ministries for daily Bible studies and devotionals. Treats and Truth Ministry, where you can get involved in helping to spread the gospel to and be a blessing to the homeless. And the Burning Bush Merchandise Store, where you can pick up some items to help spread the word about the show. If you know anyone who needs to hear this, please let them know about the podcast and help share the message of the Bible, the hope we have in Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ. If you'd like to contact me, you can email me at steve at theburningbushpodcast.com, which is linked in the show notes as well. So until next time, have a great day, have a great cigar, and God bless. God bless.